any health conscious person that has an aura ring to track their sleep, that has a whoop to track their physical activity, would benefit from tracking their bowel movements so that they see what their diet and lifestyle does. I mean, regularity and, and gut health is health and happiness for the person. Sonia Grego, welcome to the Scope Forward show. I'm uh, very excited about this interesting topic. We're going to be talking about smart toilets. So I first want to welcome you, Sonia. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Uh, So Sonia, I want to get started by sharing a little bit about your background. Sonia Grego, PhD, is founder and CSO of Coprata and professor of engineering at Duke University. Uh, She's led the development of a smart sampling toilet that automatically captures stool data post-flush. And she's passionate about bringing this product to GI patients uh, to improve outcomes. Very interesting background, I must say. But I want to start by asking you, I'm sure growing up or while studying engineering, uh, you didn't dream of uh, working on smart toilets. Like, So how did this Uh, come about? It's been an an interesting journey. So my PhD is in physics and uh, I have over 20 years of experience working in applied technology and engineering developing uh, biomedical technologies. I worked on wearable sensors and biosensors in a variety of capacities. I started to be interested in toilets A few years ago, I would say eight years ago, myself and uh, colleagues here at Duke University, we have an entire center that has had large programs funded by the Gates Foundation to develop toilet technologies. If you think about it, the toilet, which is a fantastic appliance, very effective in doing its job of removing waste, it has not changed since it was first introduced in the home in the beginning of the century. It's a white ceramic bowl with water and you flush it and your waste goes away. And it is fantastic for that. As we were working on technologies for treatment of the waste, we we posed the question and particularly my interest in biomedical technologies to have an impact on health. We wondered, well, is there data in this waste that we are flushing away? Can we capture it before we flush it away? And the answer is a resounding yes, and that is what we set up to do, technology that analyzes stool data. Also, I want to add my experience with sanitation technologies for, for other for environmental applications. We have deployed and tested many toilets in different, with real users, and we uh, become aware of how sensitive Uh, the topic of using the toilet. It's a private personal act and users and particularly women are very sensitive about uh, the use of a toilet. So we have designed a product for the Cobrata Smart Toilet. We went to really great engineering effort to design a product that does not appear different to the user so that it doesn't engender uh, discomfort. I just want to Delve a little bit deeper. Was there a certain trigger? How did the exact idea come about? Or were you just simply thinking, hey, like, you know, we got to measure stool data. There is a lot of data in stool. So let's figure out a device or make a device that helps us do that. What was the process there? Well, the process was, we know, and speaking with uh, physicians, collaborators, and gastroenterologists here at Duke, we learned, yes, there is a lot of data in stool and it is very difficult to get it. The gastroenterologist collaborators told us that they spend most of a visit with a patient just figuring out what was the irregularity in the bowel movement that is associated with the concern that brings them to the visit in the first place. They say, well, 90% of the visit is just figuring out the consistency. What do they mean? The volume, is it little? Is it a lot? What's little? What's a lot? People do not have a frame of reference because it's a private act and everybody only knows what they are doing. The physician told us, yes, I would love just to know how many. They tell me they go to the bathroom uh, 20 times a day. Is that really true? Do they, there is something coming out really 20, all 20 times that, that seems impossible. And yet 
there is this mismatch between what patients report and what clinicians understand. So there was data in that. And then additionally, they also said, well, and when you need a stool sample, you send them home with a stool kit and you know you get it back hardly maybe 40% of the time. Like people just don't wanna do that. So the need was explained very clearly to us. And we said, well, of course you could just you know, engineer something that scoops down in the bowl and picks it up or takes a picture of it from the bowl and you're done. But that's, that's where our engineering experience said, no, 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 no. I mean, you can do it, but if you can do it, you should not do it <laughs> because nobody will ever use it. Our experience is everything has to happen in a system that appear normal and usual to the user. Like toilet users, they just want to see a white bowl, no gizmos around it, water in it, that's it. That's, that's the only thing they want to see. So he said, well, in our laboratory, we are completely set up to, to test toilets. So we have them on, on laboratory benches. We are very familiar with the physics, the fluidodynamics, the engineering of the whole system. We said, okay, let's figure out how we do this stool analysis after the stool has left the bowl, outside the purview of the user. Well, that's easier said than done. That was months of brainstorming and test and tried and trues. So our current technology is the result of a large number of tests and failures. But now we have it. And we think our approach is unique and it is. Can you explain to me what exactly it does and how it does what it does? The principle is all toilets are designed to take the waste and move it to the sewage line as fast as possible. So you flush and the hydrodynamics is designed, fluidodynamics is designed in such a way uh, that, you know, the stool moves very quickly down the drain pipe. The point of our invention is we were able to immobilize it for a brief moment and in a reversible way. So whatever happens in the pipe uh, to the stool after it leaves the bowl is it stops in a region of the plumbing for a brief moment. There, all the sensors are placed and we get the information that we need and then uh, the stool proceed uh, being flushed away. So we have a toilet that is designed to do sort of the opposite of what regular toilets do. Yet the appearance of it to the user and to the customer is of a very regular toilet. It, we could show you a picture from a toilet from Home Depot, you could not tell the difference, which is the point. And we think that will really facilitate adoption because people, for example, th this is designed for residential use to be installed where people go to the bathroom, which is at home. In case they have family members, they don't wanna be tracked or a guest coming in the home, we want the toilet to look like um, a regular toilet, but yet being able to capture all this data. So this is the entire toilet itself. Like, so if, if a user has to use it, uh, they got to replace their existing toilet. Yes, we understand that's something that people do not often change their toilet. So this is a great opportunity. The installation is provided as part of the product is a 90 minutes operation. And the toilet that is removed, we uh, have a reuse of it for we crushing it material for constructions. So we have a sustainable approach to the reuse of the old, we call them unintelligent toilet. The user has to install a whole new toilet, but will make the experience as seamless as possible. And that is a one-time operation. After that, they will have a toilet that operates like a regular toilet, but as an opt-in solution, the member of the family that wants to be tracked, I mean, they will use the toilet as they regularly do, but then on their phone app will appear data trends that describes the values and the information that our sensors and algorithms produce. I want to talk about the sensors. Uh, what kind of sensors are there? And I'm assuming you're taking a picture also. I'm curious, how how is that possible? Is that now is, is this toilet plugged in 
uh, to an electrical socket or is it battery operated? The system requires power, the same as uh, conventional smart toilets that are on the market. There are products that have features such as heated seat, incorporated bidets that require power. So this system does require power. So it will be either a socket if that's available or power operated or, or battery operated with a rechargeable battery like your power drill. And in the absence of power, it operates, it does not record the data. That's the only thing that can go wrong. It still works like a regular toilet unless a signal is given and the data is collected. So it just operates normally. Indeed, there is a camera. And let me specify again, the camera is in the plumbing. It is really the background image of the camera is a piece of pipe. So there is no concern whatsoever that the user or the ball is ever involved in these imaging. So we capture images uh, of the stool and uh, we have extremely high quality images. We also have other sensors that are commercial off the shelf sensors or sort of customized physical sensor devices. So we are able to capture parameters of the stool properties, which are what clinicians typically ask of patients. So whether uh, it's a urination or a bowel movement, what's the consistency, both from images as well. We also have a specific diarrhea sensors that measures the turbidity of the wastewater to capture the component of a liquid stool. And that allows uh, altogether to have a complete, we have the full range of Bristol scale from one to seven, unusual colors and presence of blood. And importantly, also sitting time and the duration between your first sitting on the toilet and when excretion occurs. Because that we believe will is a surrogate of urgency or straining, which are parameters that clinicians are interested in knowing about and currently are, are just qualitatively um, expressed. How does this uh, data, I'm assuming this data gets transmitted either via Bluetooth or the cloud and goes somewhere. So tell us that process. So imaging and analog sensors, and these are operational and our first pilot is ongoing in our own facilities. So we, we are collecting the data as we speak. The data is collected and analyzed on our own servers. And it, it is coupled with um, algorithms so that all these signals becomes actually information parameters. So people will get a score about their sitting time and their changes from a baseline. So Bluetooth or is it Wi-Fi enabled? How is it getting? We can configure this needed at the moment is Wi-Fi enabled just for convenience. Just like a smart TV now, you know, there's a smart toilet, like so you configure it to your home network. All this gets analyzed and relayed to an app. Yes. We envision the data as a summarized in, a, in form of a dashboard for the convenience of the user. So one of the questions that we always receive is once the toilet is installed, it, these sensors will work indefinitely. So it will capture pictures of every bowel movement. One user's one bowel movement per day. If we had 100 toilet installs, we would have 200,000 data points in a year. So that will be, we, we believe our uh, Comprata toilet will truly be an at-home biosensors for GI tracking that so far has not been developed. And that data clearly needs to be summarized in dashboard, both for the users and for the clinicians that are interested in seeing it. So for the users, we envisioned an app and for clinicians, some form of easily transferable uh, information. I'm, I'm assuming that the toilet is designed for a single user. What if more than one person uses the to in a toilet? How oh, does it differentiate between one person's stool and the... Uh, yes, the there are many ways in which the toilet can differentiate the user and we envision that customizing on the customers. Okay. Younger clientele are happy to just have the toilet recognizing the cell phone that is approaching the toilet. For older users, uh, 
people have asked us, can I just have my own button? So when I use I'll, my own flush button, I'll just, I'll flush that, that button. So there are many ways in which the toilet recognizes users, but I always specify that that will be customized to the, to the client and how many people want to be tracked and people that don't want to be tracked will not be. So it's an opt-in system. While the development of the product is going on, how does one even test for something like this in a lab or at the university? We certainly tested extensively on laboratory benches before we ever installed in a bathroom. And we have uh, here at Duke University a unique facility that was designed to test toilet. So we collect uh, specimen donations, stools from healthy volunteers and poor flush in the toilet. And that's how the science is being done for development of the technology. So it's a unique capability, but we happen to have it. And we are very confident of the quality of the product we have developed. It comes from a sort of deep bench of knowledge and capabilities in this specific space. Do you have a number in terms of how many data points that you've collected so far? What kind of data have you collected so far in terms of, I want to talk about quantity. I understand the quality of data. I just want to, I'm curious about the quantity of data that you have. I don't have it off the top of my head. We have developed an algorithm on 3000 images. Those were obtained by crowdsourcing. We have published a study on um, the ability to sample the stool once from the toilet. And there we had hundreds of data points. And for the toilet that we have installed now, we have just a few months of data. You can calculate multiple up to five users per day times seven times a few months. What have you learned so far? We have learned from a stool image, an algorithm is very good at recognizing consistency and as reliable as clinician. We also, there are studies in the literature since this is an area that, that is being investigated. Other studies have reported that algorithms are better than people at recognizing the specimen. We are really comfortable with the assessment that sensor-based analysis of stool will provide clinicians more accurate data than what a patient could do just turning around and looking. We have also learned that it is possible to sample the stool from the toilet region and it's possible to conduct biochemical analysis on that sample. This capability is not in our product yet, it has been characterized separately and with funding from the NIH. So our platform has like near-term ability to collect uh, all this information on the bowel movement, but it will also be developed longer term towards stool sampling and having a, a fecal uh, specimen that can be sent a laboratory for biochemical analysis. This is the earlier version of the product, but like once you get to later versions of the product, what do you hope to achieve in terms of the science aspect of it? From the scientific aspect, we think the Cobreta toilet will be first tool that empowers people with their data so that they can take better care of themselves to have, you know, longitudinal data about their bowel habits so they understand when a lifestyle changes make, makes an effect. They will empower clinicians to reduce uncertainty in prescription and, and management. In my conversations with gastroenterologists, they always say, well, I'm trying this, I'm trying that. They tell me it's not working out. I'm surprised that the patients give me this feedback that I feel like it's almost impossible. I feel like there is a great uncertainty. I, I hear clinicians talking in follow-on conversations with their patient, uh, looking for potential alarm signs that the diagnosis was not right. So I feel like that, in, especially in many chronic GI diseases like I, IBS or disorder of the brain interactions, there is so much uncertainty, both from the clinician and the patients. Our dream is to put this uncertainty to rest uh, or partially, at least with a steady stream of information that rules out the alarm bells. Um, I was told, for example, that bowel movement, nocturnal bowel movement are an alarm sign. I'm like, wow, so 
something just like a timestamp or when you have a bowel movement could tell your physician that, wait, there is something wrong. The condition is evolving and we need to do a different treatment. That's something that our tool would be able to, to do. And also give peace of mind to caregivers for patients, for, for caregivers of children or vulnerable populations that cannot speak for themselves of what's going on in the bathroom. So we want to give patients and clinicians certainty and value from the data. Much longer term, we envision that the stool sampling capability will be added to our platform, and that will have to be an um, FDA clear device. So the development timeline is a bit longer uh, for that one, but that will empower, for example, celiac patients to check for inadvertent consumption of gluten in their stool to conduct microbiome tests to conduct uh, stool tests for patients with, with IBD or for patients for which fecal test is recommended multiple times a year and is not a pleasant act. What kind of uh, disease conditions are you currently planning for? The toilet uh, would benefit patients with all sorts of GI conditions that results in bowel irregularity, which is practically all of them. But particularly the IBS, functional constipation, SIBO type of, and IBD patients would immediately benefit from the toilet. We also think that health conscious people, even people that are not currently uh, patients of GI, but any health conscious person uh, that has an aura ring to track their sleep, that has a whoop to track their physical activity would benefit from tracking their bowel movements so that they see what their diet and lifestyle does. I mean, regularity and, and gut health is health and happiness for the person. We also envision use in, of course, research studies and clinical trials, like clinical trials, particularly for a GI conditions, are uh, they rely on facial self-report for many of these improvements in bowel movement frequencies or straining or urgencies. And we believe our technology would provide investigators and stakeholders with a robust set of data for that. So the sky is the limit. There is a lot of white space in the toilet monitoring your gut health. The reason being, we believe, is very difficult. It is what we have developed is technically very difficult to do because of the heterogeneity of the human stool. While urine, for example, early on in the development of the toilet, people asked us, well, are you doing a urine analysis toilet or are you doing a stool analysis toilet? And we reflected and our choice was very conscious. Urine is the liquid. It is not technically that difficult to have a urine analysis toilet and capability could be added on to our platform. We know exactly how how we would do that. Stool analysis toilet is much more difficult because anything can come out of there from very hard to completely liquid. And you have to capture it all because particularly the extremes are of interest. So we tackled very deliberately head on a very difficult problem from an engineering standpoint. We believe we have solved it. And now uh, we are interested in in having a product that will bring benefit uh, to patients very soon. Let's switch gears to the business aspect of uh, Coprata. So what can you share with us about uh, where you are as a startup, as a business uh, where is the company currently? The company is a spin-off of Duke University. We started with pre-seed investment by enthusiasts and believers of, of smart toilet that have been uh, supported our research and they nurtured it since it was at the, at the university stage. We are making fast progress. Our team is growing, headed by a CEO. We have Completed pre-seed round, we have raised funds from federal sources and other sources. We have won uh, first prize as a new business venture out of Harvard Business School. So we have received uh, recognition for the originality and the potential impact of our approach. And of course, we are now raising funds again. What is the product priced at? Do you know already or is it still evolving? 
we are still working on the pricing structure of the uh, smart toilet, but it will be in the range of the existing smart toilet. What is the business model? Is it mainly by selling directly to consumers or are there other types of revenue sources that you're envisioning? Mm -hmm. Our first step will be a direct to consumer. We believe that once the users expands and we have a base of users, we'll be able to conduct studies and demonstrate the value to healthcare of the data that the system produces. So once we are able to demonstrate the improvement in outcomes, the savings in time and healthcare cost that the data produces, we envision more of a B2B to C model in which payers and big employers will be interested in uh, uh, subsidizing or partially reimbursing the device for their patients the same way as it is done for diabetes. Now, diabetes as a chronic disease is far ahead than GI chronic diseases, but GI chronic diseases are pretty expensive and really impactful on the quality of life of a large and increasing number of people. So we believe that large employers and payers will take notice of a system that enables remote patient monitoring with all the savings that come. And then further out, our market can can expand to, to stool sampling and medical grade devices that target specific population and the whole uh, sampling analysis. So our model starts with a clear focus, but it expands into many directions. How far are you from a public launch of the product? We are recruiting users for a pilot launch of our product um, later this fall. And we want to have product for sales uh, from our website in 2023 next year. So we are very close to the launch of our first product. There's one final question before you know, I let you go. Uh, is given what you know, given this journey, in your view, what is the future of uh, a specialty like gastroenterology? The future of, of gastroenterology, like of many other specialties, is in telemedicine. That's what COVID has pushed us toward and digital technology has developed us. For this specialty, particularly where uh, there has been no at-home biosensor tracking the specific physiological activity of the patient, we believe our toilet will be an important tool that will enable care that is remote, that is proactive and not reactive, and that will track patients in the long term to keep them in a state of remittance and health. It's quite an amazing innovation. I've never uh, spent so much time talking about stool, you know, leave alone a toilet. Like So it's been very, very insightful. And it's amazing to note your journey from biomedical engineer to the founder of Coprata. Sonia Gregor, thank you so much for uh, joining today at, you know, on the Scope Forward show. Thanks for having me. It was great talking with you.